As you do calculations involving the photoelectric effect, it's uh, sometimes useful to convert between some standard quantities. For example, often we're expected to relate photo current to the number of electrons. And so let's take a look at how exactly we can do that from here on in. And it's something we've done before, but I'll just remind you, the formula for current says that I is equal to Q divided by T, usually write it like that, but word formatting looks like that. So I is Q over T. Remember, I is current in amperes. Q, when we work with amperes has got to be uh, charging coulombs. And then finally, T is time in seconds. So um, with that in mind and understanding that the elementary charge is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, uh, one example of how we could convert would be um, to, Given a photo current, let's say, for example, 5.2 amps, remember that 5.2 amps is really the same as saying 5.2 coulombs per second. So if I want to convert 5.2 coulombs per second to electrons per second, let's focus on the coulombs part. 5.2 coulombs um, is going to be equal to a number of electrons. Consider that each electron brings with it only 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So one way that we could do this, and it's somewhat intuitive to people, is to just take the 5.2 coulombs, divide by the charge in each electron, 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs per electron. We don't want to do this blindly. So if you consider your units in the end, by the time we take our coulombs up here and cancel with our coulombs here, coulombs will cancel out and the electrons will end up on top. So performing this operation of 5.2 coulombs divided by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs per electron will give us a result in electrons. Once you calculate it, you get the answer of 3.3 times 10 to the power of 19 electrons. Now, when we ultimately relate that back to current, remember that's the only the number of electrons. And so if we had 5.2 coulombs per second, we can now say that's the same as 3.3 times 10 to the positive 19 electrons per second. And then in the photoelectric effect, uh, if this was happening for a number of seconds, we could then determine the number of electrons that make it their way from one side of the plate to the other or are released from a photoelectric surface at any rate. This just gives us the rate at which they're being released, 3.3 times 10 to the 19 electrons per second. Again, this really comes down to relating current in coulombs per second to electrons or electrons per second. Now, the next one is new to people, um, relating energy in terms of photons, electrons, and all those quantities in the photoelectric effect experiment to power and the number of photons. So just really remember, this is probably the most important part of this to understand how this works. In Einstein's model, a source of light emits photons. The number of photons is related to the intensity of light. And that can be quantified as the power of the light. So just for those people who didn't remember this, when we talk about power, it is a change in energy per time. So if you, for example, have a light bulb on that is a 50 watt bulb, we are really saying that that has the ability to emit 50 joules worth of light each second. Because we are familiar with Einstein's idea here, we can relate the watts, the power, which is energy over time, to the energy of the photons. So consider this. For red light that has a wavelength of 750 nanometer, each photon has a certain amount of energy related to the wavelength. It's Hc over lambda. So Hc over 750 nanometers turns out to be 2.652 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. That is a single photon of red light with that wavelength. 
when we are faced with the challenge of converting or relating that to power, consider what that would mean if only one photon came off a light bulb each second. The power output would be power is change in energy over time. So we have a measly 2.652 times 10 to the minus 19 joules each second. So that would only provide us with 2.65 times 10 to the minus 19 watts, much less than your typical household light bulb. But this is a very dim light bulb that is only giving off one photon each second. So what if we wanted to find out how many photons come off of our 50 watt light bulb? Well, if our light bulb is 50 watts, which means 50 joules per second, and we wanna find out what that means in terms of Think of the units. I think that's always the best way to get yourself to a conversion factor. We want to go from 50 joules per second to a number of photons per second. So if our light bulb, just to borrow some numbers here, if our light bulb happens to be a red light bulb giving off 750 nanometer light, then we know the energy of a single photon. We're really trying to find out how many of these photons does it take to create the 50 watts? So 50 joules per second divided by 2.652 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per photon. You want to be careful with the units. Then when we're done here, you'll notice that the joules in the numerator of this numerator cancel with the joules in the numerator in this denominator. Confusing, isn't it? But the joules here and the joules here will cancel out. The photons will end up way up here in the numerator, and we will get a number that will be, when we're done, in units of photons per second. Pretty sure I won't have room to fill that in. So if we do the calculation of 50, divided by that 50 divided by 2.652 times 10 to the minus 19, we should know how many photons per second. And it turns out that this light bulb is giving off about 1.88, one decimal 8, 8 times 10 to the power of 20 photons each second. All right, so given that, now we can imagine what would happen if we turn that light bulb on for 10 seconds, we'd get 10 times that many photons hitting a metal plate potentially. Or if we turned our light bulb on for an hour, we get an hour's worth of these photons all added up together. We multiply by how many seconds an hour, 3,600, to find out the number of photons. So as you can see, the relationship between power and energy is the most important one here, that power is a change in energy over time. And the change in energy or energy that is given off of a light source can ultimately be used to figure out the number of photons that are coming off that light source. Quick note, um, if you thought, hey, let's find out how many photons are coming off a regular light bulb in my house. Uh, remember, regular incandescent light bulbs are white light or filament bulbs, or sorry, um, even, LEDs give off white light and they have a range of wavelengths. So not really plausible or simple to find out the amount of photons that come off each second. Although you could take an average and say, you know, somewhere in the middle of the spectrum is probably the average wavelength. So you could probably pick something like green or blue and say, based on blue or green wavelengths, what's the energy on average of the photons coming off that bulb? But for our purposes, we're going to, as you've probably seen, a lot of questions where we talk about monochromatic light for a reason. Monochromatic then allows us to quantify the power, the wavelength, then the power, then the energy and those things. So a couple of uh, conversion factors that you might uh, find handy as you go through more problems involving photons, particularly the photoelectric effect experiment, but later on, even if you get into um, further studies with light.